What's up guys, Alec and Akira here. And today we're blasting delts, the scientific way. The exercise I'm gonna show you guys today is very simple to perform and only requires a pull-up bar or other sturdy bar to hold on to, as well as just a light dumbbell. And best of all, it will absolutely trash your front delts and really start slapping some solid muscle onto those old shoulders. So let's just get right to it. This exercise has quickly become my favorite shoulder exercise of all time because you can really feel the burn while you're doing it. And it works through a process that's known as reciprocal inhibition. So basically in simple terms, all of your joints have two sets of muscle groups acting on them. One group generally acts as a flexor for the joint and the other as an extensor. Depending on the action you're aiming to achieve, either flexion or extension, one muscle group will be what's known as the agonist, which is the group that's responsible for applying force to the joint during that action and therefore executing the movement. And the other group will be the antagonist, which means that that muscle group is opposing the current joint action you're performing and therefore it must relax in order to allow the agonist muscle group to apply force to the joint without the two opposing muscle groups working against each other. Let's use the elbow as an easy example here. Now, the bicep muscles must work to flex the elbow, decreasing the angle between the upper arm and the lower arm. And the tricep muscles, on the other hand, must work to extend the elbow, opening the joint and increasing the angle between the upper and lower arm. So during a curl, for example, the biceps would be the agonist muscle, causing the elbow to flex and the triceps would be the antagonist, which must relax in order to allow the bicep to perform its job. Now, the problem is the process of reciprocal inhibition that I mentioned earlier is incomplete. And oftentimes antagonistic muscle groups will still contract to a small degree, even when they're not being called upon to produce force at a joint, thereby stifling the force production capabilities of the agonist muscle group during that particular action. So one thing we can do to combat this issue is try to fatigue the antagonist muscles before working the agonist muscles. And one way to do this is through static stretching. It's been well documented at this point that long duration static stretching can transiently but drastically decrease the force production potential of a muscle group. Well, if we can decrease the force production potential of the muscles that antagonize the delts, then we can contract our delts much harder when we work them because their contraction will no longer be inhibited by the muscles that oppose them. Ultimately, this allows us to work those muscle fibers much more thoroughly than we could otherwise, thereby creating much more strength and hypertrophy in the long run. All right, so with the boring stuff out of the way, let's get to the exercise. Now, I call this movement the chimp raise because you resemble a chimpanzee hanging out on a tree branch while you do it. Basically, it's really simple. You just hang out with one arm on a pull-up bar, and while you're doing that, you perform a simple dumbbell front raise with the other arm. I like to use a really light weight for my dumbbell raises and really focus on moving slowly up and slowly down and focusing on the contraction and feeling the burn in the deltoid muscle. After you do one arm, just go ahead and move immediately into the other arm and then give yourself a solid 60 or 90 seconds of rest before going into the next set. So the beauty of this movement is that we're really killing three birds with one stone here. So for starters, the anterior deltoid gets absolutely crushed. It's the anterior deltoid that's responsible for shoulder flexion. And the lats, which are primarily responsible for shoulder extension, are what oppose this action. 
So by hanging from the bar, you're able to get your arm way up over your head and stretch the hell out of your lats. So then when you switch arms and work the deltoid on that side, the lat there has been weakened by the prolonged stretch and is no longer able to effectively oppose the deltoid muscle. Meaning the delt can now contract more forcefully and get its muscle fibers worked more thoroughly which is good news if cannonball delts is what you're after. Secondly, like I just mentioned, while you're trashing your deltoids, you're also simultaneously stretching your lats, which aside from providing a greater reciprocal inhibition effect is really important because a lot of people and lifters who work their lats hard especially end up with really tight lats, which can not only contribute to poor posture, but also make it impossible to achieve a proper overhead position with a barbell for overhead press work or even a proper front rack position for your front squats which is unfortunate because these are two fantastic exercises so making sure you keep your lats loose and supple can go a really long way towards combating this issue and if we can work those stretches while getting other stuff done at the same time then that's a win-win Lastly, the one arm hang aspect also works the hell out of your grip. At first, most people will probably have trouble holding on to the pull up bar with one arm for even just a few seconds. But after a few weeks of work with this exercise, I think you'll come to find that your grip strength begins to improve rapidly. And that will carry over into your other big exercises as well as just everyday life. Your grip is literally what tethers you to the barbell during most exercises. And if it's weak and limp, then that will create an energy leak from the larger muscles in your hips and thighs and whatever else that you're trying to use to transfer force into the barbell. If your grip is solid and strong, then there will be no energy leaks and you'll be able to work your entire body much harder because of that, leading to better gains in the long run. Plus, you won't have a limp ass handshake anymore. Nobody wants to feel like they're grabbing onto a dead fish when they go to shake your hand. So taken all together, this exercise has immense benefits in terms of posture and grip strength, and it will undoubtedly lead to better all around full body gains because of this. Now, I don't have proof of this next part, but I would even venture to say that the improved grip connection with the barbell will even make your calf exercises more effective because you'll be able to squeeze the barbell harder during your calf raises. Even if it's just sitting on your back, that'll still lead to more total body tension and tightness and consequently much stronger contractions in the lower legs as well. Plus, it'll give you absolute cannonball shoulders that'll have you filling out your t-shirts in no time and finally giving you that aesthetic V-taper that we all covet. Anyway, that's all I got for now, guys. Please be sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and definitely leave me some love in the comments down below. And if you guys are enjoying these new science-based exercises that I've started demonstrating, be sure to let me know in the comments and definitely make sure you thank me for all those newfound gains. Keep training hard, and I will catch you guys next time.